Juan's question was basically asking about what happens with dealer flows around the vol trigger. So the vol trigger, for those of you who are not terribly familiar with that level, it's we'll just consider it like the zero gamma level basically. And, and from a 50,000 foot view, there's a lot of dynamics that are changing inside of this and, and are depending on exactly the regime we're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. But let's just talk about like the gamma 101 view is that at 4,000 is our vol trigger. And so in theory, when we are below this level, dealers are in what's called a short gamma position, right? So that means that if the market was to trade down here, negative gamma dictates that as the market moves lower, and if you need to hedge gamma, negative gamma, you sell futures as the market goes down, because let's imagine that you're just short puts, right? If you're short puts and the market's going down, you're, you're taking on negative P&L, it hurts. So you sell futures as the market goes down, and then if the market bounces and goes up, you get to buy those futures back. And the result is you get much larger price swings in the market, right? The speed of the market's faster, volatility spikes faster, and the movement is just much higher. That's the negative gamma hedging. Above 4,000, you have positive gamma hedging. Positive gamma hedging means that, you know, your long calls, like the JP Morgan call, right? People are selling calls at strikes above. So as the market goes up, you're selling futures incrementally into that rally. And then if the market comes back, you're buying. So the net result of that is if I'm selling tons of futures as the market goes up and I'm buying tons of futures as the market goes down, the net result is that volatility gets squashed. Okay. So that's why below the vol trigger, we think it's a high volatility regime and above the volatility trigger, we think it's a low volatility regime. Now, generally we got to break the vol trigger to the downside, right? So that's why when we flip that volatility trigger, the, the onset of that volatility is generally going to mean likely larger drawdowns and a spike, right? Because the first move is going to be, we're breaking it to the downside and balls on a spike and we'll move pretty sharply lower. You get a sense of that too, just in the range we're talking about, right? We, we, we don't think the market's really going to move much over 40, 65. It's kind of this pinning level and the flows are kind of squashing volatility here. But again, if we, if we break next week, particularly early next week, 4,000, then, you know, the VIX is probably going to move up to 20, 25 really quickly. Maybe not 25, but 2022 move up pretty sharply. And we're going to very quickly move down to this probably 3,900 levels. Of whatever, you know, kind of talking about. So that's the general view of what's happening. Now, if we think that put skew is down and, and people are selling puts or we think people are buying calls or there's other reasons for us to adjust where we think gamma is flipping, we try to talk about that in the morning notes, right? We try to give you an update of the positions around where we think volatility is actually negative, excuse me, where we think gamma is actually negative or positive. But if you just want to start with a base framework, that volatility trigger is, indicates low volatility above that level and high volatility below. I was actually looking at some stats around this. Uh, okay, so this is what happens when we close basically within 1% of the vol trigger. And what you can see is that, you know, interestingly, what I really want to focus is on the distribution of returns. So you can see that, you know, this is several hundred data points, right? So it's meaningful. But typically when we close just above the vol trigger, we tend to kind of sit there, right? There's a small positive skew, I guess you would call it here, or at least the returns are slightly positive. But the, the takeaway here is there's not a lot of volatility. So you know, if you think about the market ripping higher and we close at the vol trigger, like how do you want to take advantage of that? Well, this suggests that selling, you know, condors or straddles or something like that may make sense or selling calls or whatever it may be, right? It's kind of a, because I think in that period where the market really rips into this level, volatility is still high and you can kind of take advantage of it. Alternatively, when you close below, below the vol trigger, look at the distribution of returns, right? Like it, it winds way out. Right. So to Dewan's question before about like, how do you think about vol trigger? Well, this is what how you think about it. Right now, of course, initially, when we break it, we think that you get negative returns, right, because we break and move sharply lower. But if you just sort of erase direction from your mind for a minute and just think about volatility, how much do we move? There's a there's a, a sharp distinction right between the way the market behaves around this level. And so, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's the sort of 20,000 foot takeaway, right? Okay, low volatility above it, high volatility below it. Now, how do I take advantage of that or, or how do I trade around that? Because again, you know, volatility happens both ways. And so I think if you always, you always think, well, that just means the market's gonna crash. Well, initially it makes, makes a big move lower, but we can have some violent rallies in that same context, right? So that is the, that is the, the gist of the vol trigger and, and, and how we think about that volatility.